Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what it is, how it affects us, how it changes us, and we're also talking about this gift of speaking in tongues. I gave pretty much an introduction to this yesterday, and I tell you, I thought it was important, the things that I'm saying, because there's so many people that are taught that this is irrelevant, that it's not for us today. And some people think that they got all of this when they got saved and that there isn't a second encounter with the Lord, and it's just not what the Bible teaches. I showed from John chapter 20 where the disciples were born again. They confessed Jesus as their Lord, that He was raised from the dead, which Romans 10, 9 says that's being born again. And Jesus even breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. But then in Acts chapter 1, He says, Tarry until you be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's a difference in having the Holy Spirit working with you and moving in your life and producing salvation and then being just totally immersed and filled and controlled with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what those verses are saying. And yet it's amazing that many, many Christians don't acknowledge a separate encounter with the Lord. You know, I've studied the history of the church to a degree. I'm not an expert in it, but I can go back and show you uh, Dwight L. Moody, Charles Finney, and, uh, you know, you just go on and on and name all of these mighty men of God who've influenced our culture and have done all of these things. They were all, they all had a second experience with the Lord. A.W. Tozer and just so many others, they all talked about a second encounter with the Lord separate from their salvation. I'm not minimizing being born again, but as far as the outward display and demonstration of God in our lives to other people, there is a second encounter that the Bible calls the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's for us today. It is separate from Salvation is not automatic that you get it. You have to believe to receive. If you doubt, you'll do without. And it is a separate experience. And, and I've shared a lot on that yesterday. Let me turn over here to Matthew chapter 3. You could also read the same thing in Luke chapter 3. And there's other places in the gospel. But this is John, John the Baptist talking. And he said this, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Man, this is a great statement. He was, he was prophesying that when the new covenant came, that the Messiah, Jesus, would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's just many references, many, many references to this. And really, the church, the Christian church, does not deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they will try and say that it came at salvation, that there is no separate experience, and they will try and deny the gifts of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, faith and uh, healing, discerning of spirits, and all of these kind of things, the gifts that are listed over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's say that those aren't for us today. But they have to acknowledge that there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit because the Bible talks about it so much. But they say you got it all when you were born again. But that's not what the Scriptures teach. I've already used those examples from John 20, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter uh, 10 and 11, Acts chapter 19 and other places. There are just many, many instances that show that it is a separate experience from the born-again experience. Plus, my own experience goes along with that. I'm telling you, this is what the Word teaches. There's many scriptures that go along with it. Let me turn over and just deal with this. I'm trying to do this in an orderly fashion. I don't know if this is the right order. But let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I was raised in the Baptist church. The Baptist church that I was in did not teach specifically against the Holy Spirit. They just said it wasn't important. They didn't teach for it. And you know, the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I had different pastors. Uh, you know, they didn't all last a real long time in our church. Some of them actually had a personal conviction against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But this one pastor who I got really close to, he acknowledged that it still happened today and some people would speak in tongues, but he says, 
you don't want that. You don't need this. This isn't for everybody. And that was as close to embracing a separate experience and the gift of speaking in tongues and the other gifts of the Spirit that any of my Baptist pastors got to. So at the very best, they only acknowledged it could happen, but this isn't something you need. And at the worst, they taught that this had passed away with the apostles. And they tried to use multiple scriptures uh, to show that this wasn't for us today. And uh, so when I started hearing about this and then I embraced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I had to deal with all of these things I was taught against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And did you know what? They were all relatively easy to deal with except one for me. And this was in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the only one that ever seemed to gain any traction with me and that really made me think that maybe the gifts of the Holy Spirit had passed away. Because right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is sandwiched in between 1 Corinthians 14 and uh, 12. And this is talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which includes speaking in tongues, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings, etc. And in between all of this, it says pursue a more excellent way. Well, I was taught that that more excellent way is love. Love beats all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But if you take it in context, it's not saying that love is better than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's saying that operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit motivated by love, doing it out of love, is better than doing it out of just the flesh. And some of you are thinking, well, you can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in carnal ways. Yes, you can. All of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 was talking about this, how that they were prophesying out of their flesh and prophesying to criticize another person in the name of the Lord. And they were coming together and taking communion and getting drunk and they were doing some things and they were wrong. You can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and not do it with a pure motive. I hadn't got time to teach on that, but that's a misconception. People think if you are being used of the Holy Spirit, you are just pure Holy Spirit. I can tell you that's not true because I've been used of the Holy Spirit and I've never been pure Holy Spirit ever. You know, when I pastored a church, this is one of the things that I taught people that really helped people and set them at ease and helped them to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit because I taught them that you get an impression from God and God gives you a word but by the time you speak it out, you could make a paragraph out of it. And it doesn't mean that you were of the devil, that you were wrong and that this was demonic because you said something wrong. No, you had a word from God, but then you just added to it your own little bits. And I taught that and I said, it's very similar to when I teach. And many of, most of you are going to agree with this 100%. Well, when I teach, it's not all perfect. But I believe that what I'm saying is inspired of God. God is leading me to say it, but by the time it gets out to where you can hear it, it comes through me, through my mind, through my personality. It comes out with my Texas twang. It comes out with all of these things. God doesn't sound like me, but God is speaking through me. He inspires it, but by the time it comes out, it's got me in it. And it's never pure, perfect Holy Ghost. When I listen to my own teaching, sometimes I'll do that, you know, to, to see if I've covered everything and stuff. And man, it's hard for me to listen to myself because I think I should have said this. I shouldn't have said that. I quote the wrong verse. I was, I was listening to myself today talking about this as I drove in and I quoted uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 12 instead of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And I was yelling back at myself, that's the wrong verse. I had a person one time that took my teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit to their pastor for their pastor to critique. And he sat down and listened to it. And every time I quoted a scripture, he would stop the tape recorder. This was a tape a long time ago. He would stop and they would look up the verse and they would discuss it. And then they'd go back. And he was critical. He was looking for something wrong. And anyway, I quoted some verse. He stopped, looked it up, and it wasn't the right reference. And so he just stopped right there and he says, I told you, this is of the devil. This stuff is of the devil. If he was of God, this would have been pure Holy Spirit. He wouldn't have used the wrong reference. And so he just rejected everything. Hopefully, most of you watching this program aren't quite that critical and legalistic. But my point is that, see, God speaks through me. I believe that the bulk of what I'm saying, the heart of what I'm saying is God. He's trying to say these things to you, but... 
AM I GOING TO SAY EVERY WORD PERFECTLY? AM I ALWAYS GOING TO QUOTE AND GIVE THE RIGHT REFERENCE AND STUFF? AND IF I MISS IT, DOES THAT MEAN THAT I WASN'T INSPIRED OF GOD? NO. GOD SPEAKS THROUGH US, BUT GOD HAS NEVER HAD ANYBODY QUALIFIED WORKING FOR HIM YET. AND SEE, I TAUGHT THIS TO MY CHURCHES THAT I PASTORED. THEY UNDERSTOOD THIS, THAT THEY COULD BE INSPIRED OF GOD AND YET GET OFF A LITTLE BIT. AND THAT'S THE REASON IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14 IT SAYS THAT WE ARE SUPPOSED TO JUDGE THESE PROPHECIES. AND SO I TOLD THEM THIS. PEOPLE WOULD BE BOLD TO STEP OUT. THEY WOULD SAY SOMETHING AND I WOULD CRITIQUE IT AND I'D SAY, YOU KNOW, I BELIEVE THAT 90% OF WHAT YOU SAID WAS REALLY FROM THE LORD. THIS WAS A GREAT POINT, BUT I THINK THAT THIS WAS WRONG RIGHT HERE AND I'D SHOW THEM FROM THE SCRIPTURE WHY. AND PEOPLE FELT SECURE AND THEY FELT SAFE. AND WE HAD THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT FLOWING. PEOPLE WERE BEING HEALED. THAT'S WHERE WE HAD PEOPLE'S NAMES BEING CALLED OUT WHEN WE HAD NEVER SEEN THOSE PEOPLE BEFORE. AND YET WE COULD FLOW IN THE HOLY SPIRIT AND SAY, YOUR NAME IS, AND THE LORD SAID THIS ABOUT YOU. YOU KNOW, WHEN YOU START OPERATING LIKE THAT, THERE IS A TENDENCY TO THINK THAT, MAN, uh, WHAT IF I DO SOMETHING WRONG? WELL, YOU PROBABLY WILL. BUT THAT DOESN'T MEAN THAT IT'S NOT OF GOD. GOD SPOKE THROUGH CAIAPHAS, THE HIGH PRIEST IN THE BIBLE, AND HE WASN'T A REAL HOLY PERSON, AND YET GOD COMMUNICATED THROUGH HIM AND PROPHESIED THAT JESUS WOULD DIE FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE NATION. GOD SPOKE THROUGH BALAAM'S DONKEY. THAT WASN'T BECAUSE THE DONKEY WAS SPIRITUAL OR ANYTHING LIKE THAT, BUT GOD SPOKE THROUGH HIM, AMEN. IF YOU'RE AS GOOD AS A DONKEY, GOD CAN USE YOU. IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT EVERYTHING YOU'RE GOING TO DO IS GOING TO BE EXACTLY RIGHT. SO ANYWAY, SEE, PEOPLE SAY, WELL, LOVE IS SUPERIOR TO THE GIFTS. NO, IT'S TALKING ABOUT THAT THE GIFTS OPERATING IN LOVE INSTEAD OF CARNALLY IS SUPERIOR. Uh, THE GIFTS OPERATING IN LOVE is, IS SUPERIOR TO OPERATING IN THE GIFTS CARNALLY. AND SO HE'S TALKING ABOUT ALL OF THIS IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 13, AND THEN HE SAID IN VERSE 8, CHARITY NEVER FAILS, BUT WHETHER THERE BE PROPHECIES, THEY SHALL FAIL. WHETHER THERE BE TONGUES, THEY SHALL CEASE. WHETHER THERE BE KNOWLEDGE, IT SHALL VANISH AWAY. AND SO THEY TAKE THIS STATEMENT AND THEY SAY, SEE, PROPHECY IS GOING TO CEASE. TONGUES ARE GOING TO PASS AWAY. AND THEY BELIEVE THAT THAT'S ALREADY HAPPENED. BUT JUST KEEP READING. IT ALSO SAYS THAT KNOWLEDGE SHALL VANISH AWAY. HAS KNOWLEDGE VANISHED AWAY? I TELL YOU, THE PEOPLE THAT SAY THINGS LIKE THIS, I SOMETIMES WONDER IF KNOWLEDGE IS VANISHED AWAY BECAUSE <laughs> IT'S NOT VERY SMART. BUT GO ON AND READ HERE IN VERSE 9. IT SAYS, FOR WE KNOW IN PART AND WE PROPHESY IN PART, BUT WHEN THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, THEN THAT WHICH IS IN PART SHALL BE DONE AWAY. AND THEY SAY THAT THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS THE WORD OF GOD. NOW, I BELIEVE THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS PERFECT. PSALMS CHAPTER 19, THE WORD OF THE LORD IS PERFECT. AND I BELIEVE THAT. AND SO I AGREE THAT THE WORD IS PERFECT, BUT THAT IS NOT THE PERFECT THING THAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT BECAUSE JUST KEEP READING. LET THE SCRIPTURE EXPLAIN ITSELF. TAKE IT IN CONTEXT. IT SAYS, WHEN THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, THEN THAT WHICH IS IN PART SHALL BE DONE AWAY. WHEN I WAS A CHILD, I SPAKE AS A CHILD, I UNDERSTOOD AS A CHILD, I THOUGHT AS A CHILD, BUT WHEN I BECAME A MAN, I PUT AWAY CHILDISH THINGS. THE POINT THAT'S BEING MADE IS THERE WILL COME A DAY THAT WE WILL OUTGROW THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, THE GIFTS OF THE SPIRIT, SPEAKING IN TONGUES, PROPHECY, AND THINGS LIKE THAT. I AGREE WITH THAT. NO PROBLEM. IN VERSE 12, IT SAYS, FOR NOW, BEFORE THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, WE SEE THROUGH A GLASS DARKLY, BUT THEN, WHEN THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, FACE TO FACE. LET ME ASK YOU, HAVE YOU SEEN GOD FACE TO FACE? WELL, YOU COULD SIT THERE AND SPIRITUALIZE THAT AND IN A SENSE SAY THAT YOU COMMUNED WITH HIM FACE TO FACE, BUT YOU KNOW, YOU HAVEN'T DONE THAT PHYSICAL. THIS HASN'T COME TO PASS. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT WHEN THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, WE WILL SEE GOD FACE TO FACE. THIS EARTH LIFE WILL BE OVER AND WE WILL SEE GOD FACE TO FACE. IT GOES ON TO SAY, NOW, when BEFORE THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, I KNOW IN PART, BUT THEN, AFTER THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, SHALL I KNOW EVEN AS ALSO I AM KNOWN. SO THIS VERSE MAKES IT VERY CLEAR THAT WHEN THAT WHICH IS PERFECT IS COME, WE WILL SEE GOD FACE TO FACE, AND WE WILL KNOW ALL THINGS, EVEN AS, I am, even as WE ARE KNOWN. LET ME ASK YOU, DO YOU KNOW ALL THINGS? DOES YOUR PHYSICAL LITTLE PEANUT-SIZED BRAIN UNDERSTAND EVERYTHING? CAN YOU MAKE A HUNDRED ON ANY TEST? CAN YOU REMEMBER EVERYTHING? NOBODY IS GOING TO BE ABLE TO SAY THAT. BUT WHEN WE GO AND GET THIS GLORIFIED BODY, WE WILL KNOW ALL THINGS, EVEN AS WE ARE KNOWN. SO THIS VERY VERSE WHERE THEY TALK ABOUT TONGUES WILL CEASE, PROPHECIES WILL CEASE. IT SAYS AT THAT TIME, KNOWLEDGE WILL VANISH AWAY, 
knowledge hasn't vanished away yet. It also says that we will see face to face and we will know everything, even as we are known. None of those things have come to pass. They aren't going to come to pass until Jesus comes again and we receive our glorified body. So this, that which is perfect is come is either talking about Jesus' second coming or it's talking about when we receive this perfect glorified body. But it'll, both of those things will happen at the same time. And then we aren't going to need speaking in tongues. We aren't going to need prophecy because you will understand everything. All of this carnal knowledge will pass away and we will have God's supernatural knowledge. We'll be seeing Him face to face. And when those things happen, then... We aren't going to need these gifts of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is given to help our infirmities. In Romans chapter 8, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself helpeth our infirmities because we don't know how to pray. When you are perfect and you receive a glorified body and your mind's going to be totally renewed and you'll know all things, you aren't going to need the intercession of the Holy Spirit. You aren't going to need the gifts of tongues. You aren't going to need prophecy. You aren't going to need those things when that which is perfect has come at the second coming of the Lord with our glorified body. But in this life, even though the Word of God is perfect, that is not what this is talking about because those other things haven't happened. So the very passage of Scripture that at one time I thought was the only passage that ever made any sense about prophecies ceasing, tongues passing away, this very passage shows that those things will not cease until the second coming of the Lord when we receive a glorified body. Until that time, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit to enable us to go beyond our own physical limitations and to operate in the unlimited power and ability of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'm saying these things because I know I came from a background where people believe that all of this Baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, operating in the gifts, seeing miracles, healings, all of these things was of the devil. That stuff passed away. That's where I came from. And yet I have come to realize that this is not true. Those things did not pass away, that God is still pouring out His Spirit. People's lives are being changed. My life has been changed. I have seen thousands, tens of thousands of people personally with my own eyes receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. I've gone back years afterwards and I've had people tell me that, man, when I prayed with you and received the Holy Spirit, that the Bible has come alive. I'm operating in the gifts. I'm seeing power. I'm seeing miracles happen, just like Jesus prophesied, that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's exactly what the Scripture says. And I'm telling you, many of you who are born again and do love God, but are frustrated and you don't see power and you do not have the supernatural power of God flowing in your life, and yet you've rejected this baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a connection between those two things. It's your rejection, your failure to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is causing the impotence in your life. That's what Jesus said. That's what all these prophecies say. That's what my own testimony says. And I'm telling you, there's some of you that aren't sure. Well, I'm not sure about this. Well, I am. I'm absolutely sure. I'm absolutely convinced. And if you aren't convinced, you ought to take the word of somebody who is. And I know that there's probably a million questions. Some of you right now are thinking, so are you saying that everybody who doesn't believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for us today, that they are of the devil, that they aren't going to heaven because they don't believe in this? No, I was born again, and I know I was going to heaven. I had a relationship with God, and yet I didn't believe in the baptism because I wasn't taught about it. And so I believe that people can go to heaven without the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, you can get there quicker without the Holy Spirit because you aren't going to have this power that Jesus talked about, and you're going to die of some sickness along the way and not fulfill your course because you don't have the power to receive healing. You know, here's another way of looking at it. If you study and see the people who are operating in the supernatural, the people who have gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, gift of faith, the people who claim to see people healed and things like that. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred, 
the people who operate in the supernatural things of God all believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Now, sometimes people who don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues will see something happen because they are desperate. They cry out. And you know, an old blind squirrel will find a nut every once in a while if he doesn't quit. And if you just are desperate and pray, you might stumble upon a miracle because God loves you and stuff. But I'm saying 99 times out of 100, the people that operate in the supernatural power of God believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. The people that don't believe in it don't operate in it, certainly not uh, very often, and it's seldom. And many of them even deny that this is for us today. If you just looked at that one thing right there, that ought to convince you that there is something to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I, that's absolutely true. And I know many of you don't want to accept that, but it's absolutely true. Am I saying that God is mad at people that don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? No, He's not mad at you. There was a time that I didn't have it, and God loved me. It doesn't affect God's love for you, whether you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit or not, but it will affect your love for God. Again, Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The Holy Spirit, when He comes into your life, He will just cause you to be baptized in love. The, I think it was Charles Finney that when he received his second encounter with the Lord, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, he described it as waves of liquid love flowing over him. And you know what? When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, didn't, I hadn't read that at that time, and I didn't describe it exactly that way. But in retrospect, that's exactly what I felt. I just felt the love of God being shed abroad in my heart. I tell you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit will make you fall in love with Jesus more than you ever have before. It will transform your life, and it'll be exactly like Jesus said. It will give you power. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for us today, and these supposedly scriptures that they use to teach against the baptism of the Holy Spirit being for us today prove that it is for us today, just like the ones I used out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is biblical. It is scriptural. It happened in the Bible. It's still happening today for people that will believe the Bible. Let me just mention again that we're offering this book entitled The New You. That's about true salvation. And the Holy Spirit is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. It will go into more detail than what I've been able to do. We're offering this for a gift of any amount to those who can afford to give something. But if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you'll call and pray with someone, if you'll call that number that's on your screen and pray with someone and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we'll send you th this as a gift. We also have CDs, DVDs, and a study guide. So listen to our announcer as he gives you information about all of this product. And please call or write today and receive these materials. <music> 